up champ Atlanta Netherlands let's go Andre Campbell what's up man Kamala Baltimore New York New York let's go let's go all right guys super excited for this call today hope you guys can get some really good value from these uh locker room calls guys it's going to get this thing knocked out and get started uh guys this is my name is Lawrence Young I'm chairman 50 with IM Mastery Academy a lot of people dub me as coach because uh, I love to give people some really good content and my experience in network marketing about 20 years. I think I've earned that right to be called coach, right? <laughs> but uh, super excited, guys. Uh, thank, I want to say, say first off, thankful and grateful for everybody on this call today uh, who were chiming in. Uh, remember, these calls are for next level leaders when you're ready to take this thing to the next level and uh, really become a chairman uh, and get positioned in this particular company, I Am Mastery Academy, as we come together collectively as a unit. So we can go vertical together. So these are all technical know-how, interview type uh, uh, calls we do where you can hear from very successful people uh, who are really getting the butter from the duck, guys. And I'm so thankful and grateful for the call today. But you guys know how we get this thing going. Uh, we're going to knock this thing out first off with a little bit of motivation. Remember, every day, guys, I do this as an exercise. We're always, um, I'm always sharing information uh, and listening to successful people, right? So I want to show you guys something that I look at, and every week I, I scout the internet for a really good video I think is fitting. So you guys enjoy this quick video, and then we'll get started with the training call. Let's go get it, guys. In this life, there will always be obstacles. There will always be challenges. There will always be giants. What has defeated you? What is your giant? Name it. Is it fear? Is it anxiety? Is it insecurity? Is it doubt? Perhaps your giant or your improbable feat is a better relationship, weight loss, or has been your obstacle, your challenge. What is your giant? This is the last day you are going to allow this giant to defy you. I know it hasn't been easy. This son of a man. There will be many giants in your life. There will be depression. There will be anxiety. There will be oppression. There will be stress. There will be overwhelm. Will you buckle under the pressure or will you rise to the occasion? The Bible says that David got up and ran into the army of the Philistines. He ran towards the battle. And like an eagle is the only bird that flies into the storm, it is time for you to fly into the next dimension of where you have been called to. What is your dream? What is your idea? What is your assignment? There is a new breed of champions emerging out of the ashes of death and fear. Your knees may be knocking, your palms sweaty, but the time is now to rise up and run after it. Run after your dream. Run after your idea. Run after your goal. Run after. 
do it with everything that you have. You will never have your future until you are fully persuaded that you are a carrier of everything required to fulfill your destiny. If nobody believes in you, you got to make it up in your mind that all you have is all you need. You are going to meet vision. Before you win, you're going to have to see it. I want you to see yourself winning. If you can see it, you can have it. In this life, there will always be a man, a woman, a boy, a girl, or a team who will face impossible odds and somehow through some combination of courage will grit and a mustard seed of faith they'll manage to overcome what i love about david is that david was not only one of the youngest the smallest the least likely not only was david underrated but his weapon of choice was underrated and there will be times in life where people will not believe in you, neither what you are carrying. I'm gonna tell you the one thing that separated David from Goliath, and that was his heart for God and God's people. If you are going to defeat your giant, you are going to need heart. You must overcome what lies between the pit of your fears and the summit of your knowledge. Our Goliaths, our challenges, our giants oftentimes meet us in our valley places. It's not on the mountaintop that David fought Goliath, but it's in the valley. I tell you this, the tangible giants in our life are defeated by means that are intangible. If a man can conquer his mind, he said, if a man can master discipline, then there is nothing he can't win. I did it. I made a the video is almost over, guys. Gotta pay the bills. <laughs> All from they will tell you that your dream is too big. They will tell you that your destiny cannot be fulfilled. They will tell you it is impossible to accomplish. What do you have set out to accomplish? But it's not about what they say. It's about what you say. I believe that you are born to triumph over every demon, over every devil, over every addiction. You are fighting for your family. You are fighting for your legacy. What you are fighting for is bigger than you. Do not forget this. David ran toward the Philistine. David ran towards the army. Your dream, your idea, whatever goal you have, get up and run after it. You can defeat this enemy and you can have your future. If you're going to defeat this giant, if you're going to win the war, it starts on the battlefield of your mind. This is where the war is won. Over the course of your life, you will discover that the obstacle is the way, that there is great counsel in conflict. We will discover that we are most creative in the midst of adversity. So do not run from your battle, for the battle is a learning experience. You got to overcome fear. The moment that you overcome fear, then your opponent is bankrupt. There's nothing they can do. You're going to have to dispense with fear and with negative self-talk. Remember your why. It is the why that gets us to win. And it is the why that gives us the power to persevere through the how. Stop looking for the addition. Stop looking for the validation. 
Stop looking for everybody to agree with what you're about to do. Stop looking for everybody to understand and know this. All you have is all you need. I can see your giant of addiction running towards you with words of darkness. Death attempted to strike fear in your heart. Will you cower? Will you back down? Or will you run into battle? But I see a generation rising up against the one who called you powerless, rising up against the fiery darts of the enemy, rising up against the lie that have held us down far too long, rising up against the despair and the heaviness and the chronic anxiety. I have waited my whole life for this moment. Thank you to everybody that counted me. Knees buckling, palms sweaty, heart heavy, but I'm ready. I'm afraid, but I'm running. You will hear my feet walk in the pavement. I'm no more complacent. Here's to everybody that doubted me. Here's to everybody that stopped believing in me. Here's to everybody that counted me out. What has been tested, what has been proven, do something with what's in your hand. Do what you can with what you have. All you have is all you need. Every day, people ask, you know, what do you do as a as a chairman 50? You know, you got to work on yourself. These videos, I watch them every morning without fail. I watch Sports Center when I wake up. I look at uh, I look at some of these videos because I like to keep up, keep up with sports. But these videos, guys, they uh they really motivate you. They make the hairs on your on your on your arm rise up. You know what I mean? Because the motivation, the words, you know, slain David and Goliath. You know, people say, you know, no way this little person can defeat this giant. And just uh, you know, he had a weapon of, you know, no one thought he could take a rock and knock out Goliath. But guess what he did? Because he had faith and he wasn't scared to run to the adversity, right? So many of us in our lives, as he talked about. You know, we have adversity. We got to run to the adversity. Don't run away from it. Run, run to it. Just like the ego runs through the storm. It goes to the storm to test itself, to see how strong it could be. It weathers the storm. It doesn't run away from it, guys. So these calls, man, are designed to help you get that, that David type of mentality so we can slay Goliath. And remember, guys, you're doing this for a certain reason. You're doing this for your family. You're doing this for your, your kids. You're doing it for your last name. Whatever your reason why is, there's a reason why you have to get out off the couch and make calls when you don't feel like it. It's a time when you, you know, when you don't feel like uh, getting on the, a, a leadership call like this, you got to get off the couch. You got to get up and answer the bell. Every time life knocks you down and hits you in the stomach, you got to be willing to get up and get off the couch and answer the bell. Right? So this call guys, I'm super excited uh, today. I got my little bro on the call today. Listen, I got a chance to meet this gentleman here. Um, you know, and, uh, and we, we met, in a Vegas for the very first time, right? And I was hearing so, so many great things about this entire team. And, you know, when they came over, I'm like, man, I'm super excited to meet these guys. I'm gonna tell you guys a quick story though. So when I met this gentleman, you know, we were in Vegas at an event and, uh, you know, it was a whole group of people came, uh, you know, up to our room. We actually were in a penthouse, right? And unbeknownst to me, they were staying right next to us, but, you know, just us speaking to people the way we do, we introduced ourselves in the hallway and they were like, oh yeah, we, we're at the IM convention as well too. I said, oh yeah, well, this is our room here. You know, my room is right across the street. Y'all come on through. So we just made it a party, right? I never forget Tamara and I were in a room with them and we were sitting there kind of sharing our experience, you know, in the beginning about uh, the IM, you know, what we've done, our experience, et cetera, et cetera. Just kind of pouring some knowledge in like we do. And uh, I never forget, they went back to the room across and the gentleman uh, who was with Jess, actually left the bath water running in the, in the suite and it flooded the whole entire suite. Now picture this guys, you in the penthouse at one of the nicer hotels. Just imagine the look on this kid's face when he saw the fact this whole room was flooded out. So you know me being a jokester, I'm like, look, man, they're going to charge you about $50,000 for that room, right? You know, the, the look on their faces was just incredible. But, uh, you know, the stories of networking, how you get a chance to, when you're in the field and, you, and you're, you're building your business, these are stories we can all just look back on in years from now and just laugh. Like, man, you remember when that happened? And, and I love meeting great people. But one thing I respect about this gentleman here, came from another company, didn't, uh, didn't ask for anything. He just came over here, 
head, you know, head down, eyes to the ground, feet running, shoelaces laced up. He's like, look, man, catch my taillights. And he came over here, ran to Chairman 10 and, walk, and ran past people, literally like they were walking backwards. But one thing I respect most about this guy is he like one of the most humble guys. He reminds me a lot of myself because I'm more like Mr. Relax Intensity, right? This guy's relaxed intensity 2.0, right? Always smooth, even kill. But when he opens his mouth, guys, he's got so much knowledge. And I was so marveled at how young he was and the fact that this was like his second company, that uh, how much he knew. And to let me know that we were in business with the right type of people. And, uh, you know, I, I think he deserves every accolade. His team is, again, running through the ranks like, like nothing else. The 50K we just gave away, his team got most of that 50K bonus. If you want to say, you know, big ups for that as well. Uh, he just broke a new P5000 in the team. Mr. Tom Henderson, shout out to Tom uh, for being on the call. What's up, Tom? P5000, let's go, let's go. So, guys, I want, I want you guys to do me a favor. Drop a seven in the chat for Chairman 10, Mr. Jazz Williams. Mr. Jazz Williams, are you there, my brother? Unmute your microphone, champ. There you go. Oh, what's up? What's up, man? How you doing? Man, I am trying to be like you when I grow up. Man, listen, listen. I, <laughs> I'm trying to get where you at. <laughs> Well, listen, man, I just want to say this, man, you know, you and your wife, man, you just like nicest people, Tamron, I love to see couples winning in this particular space. Um, and, you know, you and I, we always have really good talks, man. I talk with your team and do leadership things. You're always like, wow, man, you just know so much when it comes to this game. And the thing is, you know, after time, you know, you being in this industry for just a few years, you know, you have said you're so far ahead of the curve, man, as far as like where I was at that particular time. And I, what I'm liking is, seeing a lot of young people today, they're so focused on this type of movement that they're really becoming professionals like cat quick. And you guys are just really getting it done, man. I really appreciate you, man. But tell us a little bit about your story, man. Thanks for your service. You were in the Air Force, correct? The name? Yeah. Air yep. Force. Yes, so sir. You served Air in the Air Force. Tell, tell, tell us your whole story, man, and get everybody in the call, get a chance to get to know you. All right, cool. Well, first things first, Coach, I, I appreciate you, man. I'm honored to be on this call. Um, I watched a couple of the calls. And um, I was actually, I was watching one earlier today with uh, the one you did with Christopher Terry. Um, I got on with Baz Grant. Um, I know you had rent, like just a lot of greats, a lot of legends on this call, a lot of money, man. A lot of people that have helped a lot of people. So um, before I even get into me, I just want to let you know, I really appreciate this opportunity. I'm super excited to just be on this call. I'm humbled, man. I'm grateful, like I'm honored, like I'm nervous. <laughs> so um, definitely all of that. So just shout out to you and just thank you for being who you are. You know, you've been consistent since day one. You've been in our corner since day one. And there's never been a time when I've called you that you haven't been there for us, answer the phone, and just had our back, man. From coming down to the city, kicking it, all that good stuff. So we appreciate you and everything that you and your wife bring to the organization, man, and just to I am as a company. So uh, thank you. So guys, um, man, I'm honored. I see we got some greats on this call. Shout out to my man, Andre Campbell. What's going on, good sir? We got my man, Ton, in the building. What's up, everybody? So guys, my name is Jazz Williams. Actually 30 now, I know I don't look it, but 30 years old. Um, I came into this industry at 22. So I've been doing this uh, going on eight years. It's crazy to think I've been here for about eight years. Uh, my background is in the United States Air Force. I seen this concept or I seen more so network marketing um, about eight years ago when I was in the United States Air Force, living paycheck to paycheck. And I think my story is you know, fairly simple to uh, similar more so to a, a lot of people that I hear that come into the industry more and, and for me, my story was I was living check to check. I was getting paid on the first. I was broke by the fifth. And I was praying that the 15th came on the weekend so I can get paid two days ahead of time. Right. That was my that was my situation. But, you know, I, I think oftentimes in life, you know, we have this thing going around going on around us. But because everybody else is living in that same situation, you don't think it's wrong. And that was me. I was living check to check. Everybody else was in the same situation that I was in. And I didn't think, you know, I just thought like, this is, this is life. This is how it's supposed to be. And then I remember getting my check garnished, right? So here I am, I'm living in England. And just to paint the picture, my wife, uh, she's back stateside. So she's not, she's not with me in England. And we got two small kids. So my wife and kids finally move over to England after I got to England. And um, one, some of my pay got messed up. And so I don't know if you guys ever been at a job your pay get messed up. You try to hit up HR like, hey, my check's short. Anybody <laughs> ever had a, a short check before? <laughs> like, let's just keep it real. Like, my check was short. But, like, if my check wasn't short. Like, my check was just, if there's another word for a short check, man, I had got, like, 200 bucks. And here I am. I'm, I'm 21 years old. 
it's a couple couple months before my a couple weeks before my birthday. I got two small kids that both in diapers, and boom, I get introduced to the industry of multi level marketing. And so um, my check was short for about three three consecutive checks. And thank God I had a couple dollars stashed away. But that's when I made a decision that I needed to do something bigger than what I was doing. That's when I made a decision to actually jump out there and get involved in this space called network marketing. And um, the rest was just history, man. So that's where it all began with me being in the United States Air Force, hating my job. Like, if I could be honest with you, coach, hating my job, you know, being at work, asking myself, like, God, like literally talking to God, like, God, how did I get here? You know, like, like just that was the situation. And boom, got introduced to network marketing. Um, and that's where we all started. And so, you know, met people like yourself and been able to be coached by people like yourself. And I just did what you guys said, do, you know, you guys said, make a list. I made a list. I didn't complicate things. You guys said, hey, here's how you invite. I started to invite and the rest was just history. But that's the beginning, you know, Air Force, two kids, beautiful wife, um, garnished paycheck, had to make a decision and, and we jumped into the space and, and we've been here for eight years now. But you, you know, you know, it's funny, man. I listen to you talking and I'm sure everyone on this call can relate to, you know, checks being short. You, you, you ready to go in there with a ski mask on Hey, hey, coach, you, you, you mute it. You mute it out. Everyone has an aha moment where they, uh, you know, they, they, they say, you know what, dang, how, how did I end up here? You know, it's like you said, you, you were just like, man, just Laura, send me an opportunity. And, you know, many of us get caught up into the, into that race. And then we get on that, that, uh, that, that trap of life, man, always chasing money and trying to make ends. You know, it used to be a saying growing up, I'm trying to make ends meet. Now people are saying, I'm just trying to make ends see each other. But you get in a position where you get in a position where you just get so caught up into it. Next thing you know, you look up five years, 10 years and pass by, you're like, oh, what was I thinking? And then when you finally start to get that, that itch to step out there, step outside the crowd, you know, let, let's go outside the corral. Let's, let's go out on a limb. That's where all the fruit is. When you're ready to, to make those type of decisions, you sit back and say, man, I was asleep at the wheel for 10 years of my life, just going through the regular, you know, Trials of life, man, not, not taking things serious as if we have an encore to this thing we call life. Like you only put it above ground one time. So what you do while you're above ground, you got to max that joker out. So when you reach that point where you just like, Lord, just send me, just send me something, a call, somebody send me an email. I just looking for an opportunity. When that opportunity came and you just, you just ready, just jumped in full steam. Or what were your thoughts on the, on when you first got in this particular industry, what turned you on the most, my friend? Man, making money. Like if if you, I I remember that like it was yesterday. I can give you the dates and everything. So, <laughs> you know, like I, I kind of gave you guys the backdrop, but the reality is this. You know, here I am. I'm this airman. You know, um, 22 years old, trying to figure out life. And the guy stood in my doorstep. He stood at the corner of my door, and he said something real simple. You know, um, no income claims, but he said, "Hey, I made fifteen hundred dollars last month." And I qualified for a brand new car. And, you know, back in this time, this one, you know, companies would give you car bonuses and all of this stuff. And so I looked at my wife and if you marry or if you got a, you know, a girlfriend, you, you know, you got somebody you rock with, y'all know that look. So I gave my wife that look and she gave me the look back, like, go ahead, cause you're going to do it anyway. So just go ahead and do it. So I literally walked across the street to this dude's house and I signed up. And after I signed up, they left. We, we live in England, right? I want to paint this picture, guys. We live in England. So these guys leave. I sign up. I spend my money. Y'all know how it is. Like, after you hit that button, you feel like you sold your soul to the devil. So to be honest, <laughs> I felt like I sold my soul to the devil. I ended up getting in, and they leave, and they go to an event in Vegas. And the dude's like, I'm coming back. We're going to build this thing. I'm going to help you. So I'm super excited. You know, I'm like, I'm ready to make some money. I don't care. We got to sell toilet tissue. Like, I got to go make some money. And so he's like, I'm coming back on Monday. And man, it was Tuesday morning and I'm in the shower and I'm showering. And I'm like, this dude's supposed to be back yesterday. He done took my money. And I would have quit it had I known how, but the guy got back coach. And um, I met with him on Tuesday night. On Wednesday night, he taught me how to fast start. On Thursday, um, I did my very first launch call, my very first in-home meeting. So I did my very first in-home meeting on Thursday. By the end of that night, Thursday night, I made $1,000. And then by Friday night, I ended up qualifying for a brand new car bonus. So at 22 years old, I qualified for a brand new BMW. So to answer your question, I hit the ground running, but because for me, just to be transparent, not to get too deep, I come from the projects. My grandmother raised me. My mom, like I moved with my grandmother when I was three. 
And I always knew I was going to be successful. I always knew I wanted more. I just didn't know how it was going to come. So when I seen everything line up, I, I didn't have time to play. So like he taught me how to invite. He taught me the four-step invite. That, that, that Wednesday night, he taught me a four-step invite, right? He said, be busy, get excited, confirm the time and date, uh, or be busy, what was it? Get, be busy, get excited, um, uh, or set the time and date, get excited, confirm the time and date. So I, I, I'll never forget, I stayed up to like two in the morning. I couldn't sleep. I had this invite going through my mind. I couldn't sleep. Because that Tuesday night, when he finally came, I stayed with him to like two in the morning. Now, anybody that knows anything about being a cop, you work in 12, 14, 16 hours. So I didn't sleep. I got home at about 2 a.m. And I had to be up the next day at 4 a.m. to be to work. So when I got out of the car, typically when you go to work, you know, everybody get there around the same time. I remember seeing two guys walking and I blacked out. And the invite just came out and said, hey, man, what are you doing tonight? At this time, I got some at my house. I need you to be there. And I said it. And then I said it to the next person. And I said it to the next person and I realized, you know, I said, hey, man, maybe I should call this dude and see if he can come present this information because I don't even know what I'm talking about. And that's what I coach. I probably invited about 20, 25 people at work that day and about 10 of them showed up to my house. And so when those 10 showed up to my house, all I did was just invite and open the door. My upline did the presentation. My upline did the closing. And when he went to close the room, I seen all these hands go up. And I looked at my wife, I looked at Tyra, I, I threw the credit card, I said, you gotta go sign up. Cause I didn't know a lot, but I knew them people was gonna be on her team. I ain't know how it worked, but I knew she, I wanted her to be first. And that was, that was the beginning, my first three days. And I never really get to share this story. My first three days of ever really building my business, I did not sleep, genuinely. I remember going to work and my friends would say to me, bro, you gotta chill with that thing you are doing. Your eyes are red, bro. You got to get some rest. And it was like, y'all don't see what I see. You didn't, you didn't see the information I seen. You didn't catch what I seen. And more importantly, you didn't come from where I'm coming from. So right. you, you don't have to go where I'm trying to go. So you, you made it when you joined the military. I knew when I joined the Air Force, this was just a pit stop because I didn't want to be a broke college student. That's what I knew. Right. So that was that was the beginning. Let me not turn up, Coach. You got look, you get me excited, man. Uh, but you know it's crazy, man. Hearing your story coming from the projects, man. Again, I you know one thing I always respect about people, man, is you know coming from situations. Not saying that's the gutter. I'm using this kind of like figuratively, figuratively speaking. But when you look at going from the projects or just being in a bad situation growing up, it doesn't matter if it's a projects. You maybe you, you live in where you didn't have you know electricity or water. I mean you know food. I mean it, it's it's people on the call right now who can relate to those stories. And what I can tell you is, man, people who came from those type of backgrounds, man, when they get opportunities, man, they seize it like a lion, man, is ready to feed the pride. And like you said, you, you're you willing to say, you know what, I'm not going to sleep for 72 hours. I'm going to get it. But you know what? When you look at like the people you work with, see, you guys on this call today, some of you guys got it, you're planning on your, your next work day tomorrow. You guys need to make sure that you, you're building your business so hard to the point where people at your job can see that you own to something. Just like they know that some of the judge, listen, man, you work at 16 hours, but you need to get some rest. Look at it, man, just like, just like in the movie Predator, man, when, when old boy say, listen, man, I ain't got time to bleed. You know, <laughs> when, he, when he got shot by the Predator, he's like, man, I ain't got time to bleed. And when you're building your business, you don't have time for rest. Like last night, I didn't get no sleep. I haven't been asleep at all since yesterday. And I was texting the guy. He said, what are you doing up at four o'clock? I said, man, success don't care about the tired I am right now. You know what I'm saying? So when, you, when you're building your business, you have to be in a position of being uncomfortable. And I know that was new to you because you were still working those shifts. But how did you, you know, uh, when you got the, the car bonus and you saw that instant gratification, was it just like off to the races for you at that point? Oh, it, it was, man, it was, it, was, it, was, it was trial after trial. So I, I wanted to throw one thing in there. One of the best things that happened to me is after I did that for the first couple of days, that Saturday was a super Saturday. So I went to my first event within my first week. So it was like the best thing that could have ever happened to me. And I remember my upline, he said, hey, man, I, I didn't know what I had did. I just knew I had two kids, right? My checks was garnished. I needed some money and I had to figure it out. So I was just working. So I didn't realize when I hit the car bonus in three days, I had did something that no one else had done in, you know, in this space. I was just working. He, he gave me some advice. He said, hey, man, when you walk in here, people are going to treat you different once they hear your story. Just stay humble. Stay cool. 
In my mind, I'm like, all right, whatever. So I go to the event and, and that showed me like it was a bigger, it was bigger than me. And it changed everything for me. So I, um, I say that not for you guys to know that I went to an event, but I want you guys to understand not only how important events are for you, but how important events are for the brand new person that you're plugging in. And an event could be a team call like this today. It could be the, the, the nightly calls that you guys are doing every single night, but you have to get your team in front of that campfire. And I was able to get in front of the campfire, but coach to answer that follow-up question, um, we hit the car bonus, but as you guys know in network marketing, you know, and I'm just being transparent. Yeah, I hit the bonus in the back office, but the BMW don't just show up. I'm still a 22 year old kid with no credit. You know, like I got to borrow the money from the bank. So you, I still have to go through the process to get the vehicle. So I didn't, you know, I didn't know I was going to qualify for a BMW in three days. So for me, I didn't get the vehicle right away. Why? Because my credit was bad. You know, I had to save up some money. Like all of this was fast. So you know what happened every day I would go to work? They would say the same thing to me that they say to you guys. Where's your BMW at? <laughs> right. right? Every day I would go to work. How's that little business? And I would all, because I knew, like, it's funny when you know, like, I knew I qualified. Like, I see it in my back office, but they don't see your back office. They don't right. see your trade account. They don't get on the go live with you. They don't experience what you experience. But I knew what I knew. But every day, coach, I would go to work and they would clown me. They would clown me. And I, would, I kept working. I kept working. And we blew this thing up. And what ended up happening was it got so big that they told us we couldn't build our business no more. They told, like, they, they called me into the office and they told me, they said, hey, you cannot make another dime in this, in this company until we figure out it's not a pyramid scheme. And right. then I went through that whole thing. I went through that entire process. People quitting your team, people leaving your team. They're trying to force you to quit the business. And it got to a point where I had to make a decision. And I made a decision in that moment when they told me I couldn't quit because I was so emotional. I said, I started this because you took my money. You garnished my check. That's why I started building this business. Now you telling me I can't build my business after you garnished my check? And I made a decision that I, that was it. And for the next three years of my business, I, I, I focused on my business. I did what I needed to do at work. I handled my business at work, but my attention went into my business. In that, when I made that decision, I was making $100 a, um, a month in residual income. I wasn't making any money, but I, I didn't need nice. money to make the decision. I made a decision in that moment. You wasn't going to pick on me when I went to work. You wasn't going to be negative to me. Like I went through hell and high water, just to be honest. I went through all the stuff that everybody goes through. I was clown. I was talked about behind my back. I, like when people would see me, they would duck and dodge me. Everything that people go through, I went through. And then I went through the phase of people saying, well, how did you do it? Well, man, just tell, I'm, I'm just a little curious. How does this part work? You know, like I went through every phase to like mentally when you're going to work, you got to tell, like I had to learn how to coordinate or how to conduct myself at work. I knew when I went to work, I'm not bringing up my business. And I had to tell people, I don't talk, if you want to talk about business, so we can do an appointment. After work, but I ain't, I'm not going to talk to you about my business so you can just the next person or, or talk about me so i just had to start treating myself with respect and respecting my business but after we hit the bonus sh hey it, it got real so it, it definitely wasn't yeah it wasn't it wasn't just to the moon it was it was a battle every it was a battle for sure but you know what's scary man just like you were saying when you were going to work and you know when you're excited about your business man you think that when you go in and you're talking to your peers and you talk about how you're excited about doing something different, how they just kind of switch up the thought process. Like, man, why are you, why are you trying to be different? Why are you trying to go against the grain? You make good money here. You know why? Because they don't want you to do well and them stay in the same spot. So they don't want to see you leave because they realize that they're too lazy to go put the work in. So they rather tell you it doesn't work. They rather tell you things like, man, did you, did you get your car yet? You know, did you get to, are you retired yet? Did you make a thousand dollars yet? All the little jabs. But listen, when I tell you guys, you got to be willing to take those stomach punches because see, that's only temporary. When you, when you put the work in and people start to see a different walk and a different vibration you're getting and you become six foot tall and bulletproof. You guys hear me say that all the time, but you got to be willing to go through that. I never forget when I worked uh, jazz, man, people, would laugh at me, you know, when I, at the time, my, one of my biggest companies was this uh, health product, it was a juice called Tahitian Noni, right? So every time, you know, something would happen, they, you know, they'd be like, hey, man, go, why don't you go put some Noni in it? You know, or did you, yeah. you know, 
you were, did you did you shave this morning? Your hair looked a little thick. Did you put some? No, did you shave? But no, just just stupid stuff, man. They will always clown me. I said it's okay, it's okay. What are you doing that's uh, that's helping you get up out of here? See, for my thing is everything I do on a daily basis. When I'm going to to go to work for ten hours and go drive from Detroit to Cleveland, get you know the same night drive back and get back to work at eight a.m. You got to be willing to do that stuff, guys. But the problem is many of you guys have such self-doubt in yourself and self-doubt in uh, whether you can go chairman that you let those, those people get to you. You let that, you let that negative self-talk keep you and put those obstacles in front of you instead of you just going freaking hard and put the emergency brakes on and have the mindset of, look, catch these freaking taillights. Catch the taillights. Get at me when, 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 once we get to where we want to go. I'll never forget when I, you know, all those guys used to clown on me, right? And I actually put this on YouTube. I wish I could pop it up, but I never forget where I work. I walked in there and I'd always told them it's going to be a day where y'all not going to be clowning me, right? And I walked in there, had, hey, man, I was suited and booted, custom suit down. You know how I get down, right? And, and uh, I walked in there, I said, listen, man, you know, today's my last day. They were like, oh, what are you talking about? You know, I said, listen, man, you know, I, I told you the past, you know, three years, I've been doing something part-time and it's, it's caught up my full-time income. I said, my eyes are hurting. I don't see myself coming back. <laughs> right? And uh, bro, it wasn't, you know, people's faces looked like uh, they just saw the angel of death, man. Like they, they were just like, oh my God, it actually worked. And guess what I did? I typed out a resignation letter I gave to every employee there. And I said, listen, thanks for the time being here. You know, appreciate you guys. We've been working almost 20 years, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, if you guys ever want to, Find a new way to kind of get up out of here. Get it, you know, call me. Holler at your boy, right? You realize not one person, not one person called. It's because people are so comfortable, bro, with the situations. You got to be willing to be uncomfortable uh, so you can get very, very comfortable. But listen, the stomach punches, the, you know, getting knocked in the head, you know, with your business, that happens. And what happened with that particular company? And how did you actually end up in IM Mastery Academy, bro? Man, so um, we did really well for a while in the company. Company went through some stuff. And I'm um, just trying to think, like, well, how do you even tell that story? Um, it was it was just really ordained by God. Like, I'm here because this is what we're supposed to be. For one, that's my belief. But, you know, what ended up happening, the company stopped paying for a couple months. And so, you know, we were loyal, you know, to the company. The same way how we are here to I Am Mastery Academy. Like, we don't want company hop. Like, you know, this is what I do. Like, we build families. Like, you guys are my family. And so we were loyal to the family, to the company, uh, to everything. But it just got to a point where, you know, when uh, bills aren't getting paid, you know, things are things are starting to fall behind. At, on the home front, you have to make a decision. And so um, one of the, what ended up happening really was I had a really good friend. Her name is Pam. Uh, and Pam said, hey, Jazzo, do you want to do this? uh this challenge where you could take a couple bucks and grow it you know we're gonna do a, do a little christmas challenge or whatever so i said yeah for sure so pam sends me the link i want to you know do a little christmas challenge trade with dr kathy kirkland you know the vibes right. and uh, i go to sign up and i realized it was network marketing and i called pam back and i said hey pam you know you uh, you know and for me you know i i was straightforward i said are you trying to recruit me like what like what's up what's going on like i don't want to do uh, another network marketing company. I'm 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 sold out for where I am. She said, Jazzo, I'm just a customer. And so um we got started. I didn't really have the money. Um I I, I was sitting at Starbucks. It's crazy. I went, I was sitting at it all started. I was sitting at Starbucks. I ain't know what to do that day in my business. So I go to Starbucks to just figure it out. <laughs> and mm -hmm. I say that to say say this it's important guys when when you when you're stuck in life for me what I realize is sometimes for me it's important for me to just move. And then God will, he'll, he'll meet me. So sometimes you just got to move. And so that's what I did. I just moved. I didn't realize what I was doing. When Pam shoots me the text, I rush home, man. I tell Tyra, I'm super excited. And so as I, as I rush home, I tell my wife, we don't really have the money, but I'm like, look, we got to do it. Like I'm, I'm doing it. So take what I had, got started. And um, when I got started, I took my first trade. Nervous is all get out, just like any and everybody else. And um, I'm shaking. It's three in the morning on the London session. And Dr. Kathy's doing her thing and she's telling people when to buy. She's like, buy now. And you know, she buy, buy now, buy now. And I'm nervous. And I called Pam. I said, Pam, what button do I hit? She says the buy button, Jazz. I said, okay, thank you. And I got off the phone. I made $7, man. And I was so excited, coach. Like, I was so excited. 
um, I made seven bucks and, and that was the beginning. And even in the beginning, we weren't really sharing it with people. We just wanted to get out of our situation. And, and the thing is, the reality is a lot of people coming from where we came from were hurt. So we just wanted to help them make money. We weren't trying to build a network marketing company. And so, um, I, I, and I'm not here to tell anybody else how to build their business, but what I've learned is when you build from a genuine place, it can go a lot further and, and it, 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 it can go there without you. But a lot of times people come into this space and it's, it's, other, you know, it, it's not as genuine as they would want it to be. But we just genuinely wanted to help people make money because we knew people weren't getting paid in that other company because we weren't getting paid. And so um, that was the beginning. We started trading and we locked in with Dr. Kathy for about 90 days. And, uh, and we just traded, man, and, and, and ran this thing up and, and made, it, made it shake. So that's, that's how we ended up transitioning. And so uh, what sealed the deal um, was when I left the last company, uh, I looked at my, the, the next year had came, it was like 2018 or something at this point. Early 2018, I get my 1099. And um, by this time we hit chairman, it was crazy. I get my 1099 from the other company and we made $18,000 the last, that last year. Like for the whole year, throughout right. all the trials and tribulations, we made 18 grand. And here I am as a chairman, and I'm like, yo, in the last 30, 45 days, I made about eight, you know, about that same amount. And that's when I just made a decision. Like it hurt, it wasn't easy, it wasn't an easy decision, but that's when I made a decision. Like I was gonna go all out and we just we just turned up and, and that's what happened. Yeah, those aren't popular decisions, man, when you got to make them, man. But a lot of times what you have to think think about is just the, the sometimes you got to take a step backwards and move forward. And, you know, generally you always got to trust your gut. When things aren't right, uh, you always got to trust that little person inside of you who's telling you, you know what, man, it may be time to dismount. You know, I've been a few a few companies. And I, I've never been a person that, that likes to do things and jump from company to company. That's never been my type of person I am. You know, I'm a creature of habit. If I find something that works, I run it you know, run into the wheels fall off, right? And, um, but when I came over here, you know, I, I noticed that uh, a lot of young people like yourself were just dominating. So it was really like uh, you coming over here and it was like a walk in the park, man. And when I, when I, one thing I can say is you came over here, man, you were like, uh, you were like stealth mode, man. I mean, you were real silent. And all I know, I'm like, man, this, this guy is just, just, just getting, the, getting the butter from the duck, man. He's making it happen. And uh, I love it, man. And, uh, you know, this testament to you, and I can't go on without saying, you know, your beautiful wife, Tyra, man, you know, it, it, just like people mention my name, it's, it's not all, it's not the L.Y. show, man. Tamara is, you know, she works just as hard, if not harder in our business. And I'm sure Tyra helps you out the same way. I love seeing couples, you know, who are doing this thing and winning at a super high level. You have any advice for anybody on the call, man, that's maybe a couple that's out there just uh, really trying to make this thing happen? Because many of the times, you know, let's be real, real, real candid. Many a times people go home and they're sleeping with the enemy. Real talk. They go home and they sleep with the enemy. The, the, the husband, the wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, they're not feeling it. They're telling them it doesn't work. They're nagging them out. Did you make your money yet? I mean, they become they become that person that was a person you work with that told you to say, we're the car. You know, that type of thing, right? But, you know, uh, you give, give anybody a couple of tips, man, on how you guys rock and roll as a couple in the business. Um, yeah, like I said, we, you know, we've been in this industry for eight years. So the, I think the first thing that comes to mind, you know, fellas, I can speak to the fellas for sure, is uh, just don't force it, you know, or anybody more so don't force it on your spouse. Um, that was, you know, it was always a struggle. It hasn't always been what it is today. But the right. best advice I can give from my personal experience is just don't force it on your spouse and allow, um, allow your spouse to come on board, you know, naturally. That was one lesson that I had to learn. And it took me years to learn that lesson. Like the first couple of years, you know, to really learn that lesson, trying to push, push somebody, you know, out of their comfort zone when that's not what they want to do. And right. so I can't really, I, I can't, I don't want to give more so advice. Let me just, I can just speak from my personal experience and share with you guys things that we, I've had to learn. And what I've learned was me and my wife, like that's my life partner, right? And she has goals and she has things that she wants to do. And it's okay if her goals aren't my goals. And if we're not gonna use the same vehicle to get to where we wanna go, but you know, she motivates me, I motivate her, I encourage her. And um, you know, and, and, and you still have to, in that relationship, learn how to balance being an entrepreneur, being a husband or being an entrepreneur and being a wife, you know, and, and taking that time out and still be a husband. Like I still have to be a husband. 
And, um, you know, it, it, when you're building a business, now I'm speaking to people that may be building and working a business together. You know, in the beginning, when you're not building together, don't force it on one another. Just build your business, make your money, and bring the results home. When you bring the results home, the results will take care of everything else. I promise you, you start paying bills, taking them out to eat, you know, whatever it is you're trying to do, they won't, you know, your spouse won't complain as much. Um, and then on the flip side, once you got start building this thing together, you know, um, for me and my wife now, like, it's just beautiful. Like, it's beautiful. We grow together. We read books together. We listen to books together. But at the same time, when I'm going hard for a week, just because I'm going hard, that don't mean she got to go hard. Like, it's weeks when she go hard and I'm not going as hard. Or I'm going crazy hard and she may not be going as hard. Then there are weeks when we both are just locked in and we're just going super hard. But it's a partnership. Um, it's a business uh, as well. But I, I, what I wanted to say was learning how to differentiate being an entrepreneur for the couples that's building it together. What we had to do was learn just how to be a differentiate being an entrepreneur and in every other aspect of your life. Like know when it's okay to be an entrepreneur. Like right now I'm in entrepreneur mode. But when I get off this call, guess what? It's dinner time. I'm going into daddy mode and husband mode, making sure the kids are showered and just knowing how to, do, you know, knowing how to still handle every other aspect of life without, don't make excuses for your business, like on why you can't build your business, but also don't allow your business to be an excuse on why you can't be a good husband or a good wife or good, you know, father or good mother. That would be my advice to anybody who's building this as a couple or even as a family. That's really, that's really, really good, man. And any, any advice, you know, that I give people as far as being uh, married uh, or having a real serious relationship and you're building, you're, you're trying to do some things differently together. I'll give you guys some tips. One of the things that Tamara and I always do is some, you know, we'll take what, like one night a week where say, hey, listen, after seven o'clock or eight o'clock, no phone. We're going to go on date night. You know, hey, the, nothing, the company's not going out of business. People aren't going to die because they can't reach you tonight. Listen, we're going to cut ourselves off from the world and keep the main thing, the main thing. Because many of the times people get caught up into, you know, hey, I'm running the chairman. And then you lose sight of what's really, really important, which is family, right? We're, we're doing this for family. But many of the times you can, like I say, force feed this down, down, you know, on someone who doesn't want it. And then you're also neglecting them from being, you know, being a husband or wife or neglecting your kids because you're trying to hit a rank. So you always got to be great and learn how to manage your time. And that's really good advice, uh, uh, Jazz, as far as that, because many times I don't see couples winning. One thing I like about seeing couples win, like I always look at Randy and Wanda, I see them posting, man, we on date night tonight. So I like that, you know, because now that shows you that, you know, we can make, we can go get the cheese, but we gonna, we gonna, we gonna be in love too and do our thing, right? You know what I'm saying? So I love seeing people, you know, do that. But what other uh, tips can you give uh, Jazz? Like, um, you know, what are, what are some of the things when you, bringing a new person uh, to get them to, to, to move right away. One thing I noticed, you're really good at duplicating uh, in your group. What are, what are some of the things you do when you first get people started? What are, what are, what are some of the conversations you have with them as far as, you know, what do you want to do as far as uh, going through the ranks? What do you want? Just just what, what type of onboarding do you do with that person uh, to help them get, get rock and roll? Well, man, um, all right, so what do I do? What do I do? It just depends on the person to be honest, like I do the same thing, but as far as how far we go depends on that individual. So for me, um, obviously like inviting is, you know, is inviting, we make a list, you know, you got your list or you, whatever you, you, you do. So you make your list and you decide to do your invite. Um, me personally, I, if I can be genuine with you coach, I'm, I'm gonna keep a G with you, man. This is what I do. In the beginning, I would just flood social media. I would kill it on social media, but now, um, I'd rather just work smarter, not harder. So for starters, a lot of my, a lot of the work is done during my presentation. And what do I mean by that? Like, and we're just, I'm painting the picture. If it's you and I, and I'm showing you the plan, hey, I want to take you either to dinner, Starbucks, somewhere where I can get me a pen and a piece of paper, and I'm finna write the vision and make it plain. And I'm about to show you what it is that we got going on, right? If I can't do it in person, I'm always going to go in person first. You get in person with me, I don't want to be too cocky, but like at least eight out of 10, you know. 10. Mariana Rivera. Huh? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that. But um, so long story short, so for me, whenever I do sit down and talk to somebody, um, I like to handle a lot of the questions and just break it all down right there in front of them. Listen, this is the product. Here's, you know, one of, here's one of the easy products that we use as far as SwipeCoin or, you know, HFX, whatever it is that we're doing. 
And then, you know, here's the blueprint on the business. You know, these, these are some spots. Here's how it works. I draw a couple of circles. You'll be right here. I got a guy that's ready to lock in. He'll be on your team. So like they already have the vision when they, when they come on board. But from there is like getting someone to move to action. And what I've been taught in this space is a sorting game, right? So in the beginning, you're going to sort through your contacts. Who's going to see it? Who's not going to see it? Who's going to get in? Who's not going to get in? But see, I always say when people actually get in the business, now there's another sort. Who's going to trade? Who's going to build? Who's going to lead, right? So for me, I like to meet people where they are, right? In the beginning, I will always, it's, it's what I want. In the beginning, it was what I want. This is what Jazz, Jazz wants. Jazz is this goes to the next rank. Jazz got to get this many sales. I got to build through you. That It was all about what I wanted and I had to scratch that. So now I want to know what it is that you want. Now, I'm not going to say that I don't use certain leading questions. Like, you know, you wouldn't mind having your fees waived now, would you? You know, you know but I want to find out what it is that you want. And then once we find out what it is that you want, I just rock out a blueprint to help you get there. If you want to trade, my goal is to get your account loaded, whether that's demo, live, get it funded, get you onto a trading session right away and make sure you're having fun trading, right? So that's my goal, whether that's using the web, a, a website to help you with the onboarding process. So as far as onboarding too, with, you know, what you did ask about, we do a lot of websites where it's just automated. Go to the site, click this, like Andre, bro, like I done stole a lot of stuff off your site, just letting you know, just saying. You know, you got some of everything, bro. So I'm just letting you know. So we use stuff like that and then from there, um, it's just figuring out what they want. One of my favorite things to do is launch. Now, I can tell you exactly how I launch somebody. Yeah, do that. Trading is pretty simple. Figure out what they want. Boom, they want to trade. I help them trade. Now, when you tell me you want to launch, first things first, right? Obviously, make a names list. I need you to make a list. I always tell people, you don't have to start big, but just start. You know, give me a list. Couple people, 10, 15, 20 people on paper. So I want you to make a names list. The second thing we're going to do is I'm going to teach you how to invite the people from this names list. Now, there's two types of invites that I'm gonna teach people, right? I'm giving y'all my, my, my blueprint. Either A, we're gonna invite for your launch event or B, we're gonna invite like one-on-one -on -one just to get them on the phone with me, right? Because in the beginning, I don't want you doing nothing by yourself. I'm doing all the heavy work. I'm finna work, I'm about to work. I'm about to, basically I'm about to invite. So I just need you to get them on the phone with me. So for example, if you got started in my business right now today, coach, like I'm gonna have you make a list and then I'm going to say, who, who's on this list that we can call right now? And you may say, I got my buddy, Andre. Only thing I'm going to tell you is call Andre and just introduce him to me real quick. That's it. I don't care about teaching you how to edify. I don't care about how well you edify. I don't care about the words that you use. I just want you to get Andre in front of me. Because my number one thing is, A, I want to launch you, or B, I'm going to build through. So I believe in build through, build with, build for. So my very thing is I want to build through. So get me on the phone with Andre. Because I know as soon as you get me on the phone with Andre, I know what to say. I know how to get him in front of the information. I know how to answer his questions. So what I want you to do in the beginning is just invite and get me on the phone. But you're going to hear me invite. you Because all I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to Andre. What's up, bro? How you doing, man? Where you from? What's going on? Listen, here's what we're working on. And I just want to know if we, if you, if you wouldn't mind checking out this video, or we got an eight o'clock tonight, you know, get my goal is to get him in front of the information. That's it. Build relationship, get him in front of that info. From there, I've already built the relationship. I'm going to tell you, Hey coach, listen, um, good job, man. I just need you to throw me and Andre in a group text because I'm taking it from there. And so you're going to watch me do that three, four, five times. If you make it to number five, if you make it to number five with me, you're going to be good. Because by number six, guess what you're going to do? Hey, Jazz, I, 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 I got, I got um, Demita on the call. I already sent her the video. She just has a couple questions. Bingo. Bingo. All I've done is help you build your confidence, build your belief, show you how simple it is by going through these simple steps. By the time we get to person 10, guess what I'm going to say? Hey, coach, I, I want to teach you something, man. I got this mentor. He's making over $50,000 a month. And he taught me this thing called edification. I want to teach you how to edify. Now I'm teaching them the edification. Now I'm teaching them the proper steps on how to three-way. In the beginning, just going to work. It's going to be uh, 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 an unorganized uh, or, uh, or organized chaos. It ignorance, ain't on, ignorance on fire. Huh? <laughs> ignorance on fire. And that's all I'm doing in the beginning. So to be very transparent, that's how I'm launching until I find that person 
that I'm going to take my arms and I'm going to wrap my arms around. We were taught in this space, it's called windshield time. See, now we got, you know, you, you probably don't do a lot of windshield time, like phone time, Zoom time, but I'm taking that person and that's the person I'm going to lock in with. We're going to set some goals. We're going to figure out who's within their organization that we can help and do the same thing. But like my belief when it comes to launching, I tell people like, you know, a great launch event is five to 10 people. If you can put five to 10 people on a, a, a Zoom call, I look at that as having five to 10 people in the living room. And if you can go from launching living room from living room and every living room you hit, you know it's going to be five to 10 people in that living room. There's no reason that you shouldn't have a shit ton, excuse my French, a, a crap ton of P150s in organization, right? So I think too often, too early in this space, when people enroll, like we just expect them to know what to do, whether that's trading, whether that's building, but there has to be that season and that time where you're molding them, you're working with them, you're working with, you know, cause you gotta, some people you gotta help them with their confidence, their belief, show them that they can do it. But that's my onboarding process. And then before you know it, um, they got it, they don't need me anymore. And then I just find the next person to help. And, I, and, and, and then after we get to that point, the rest is leadership. The rest is, hey, read this book, you know, it's leadership, it's belief, because it, here's the reality, coach, and you can agree with this, and I think I can, we can, Andre, we can all agree, the skills that it takes to successfully build a network marketing business isn't that difficult. Just like the skills that it takes to become a great trader isn't, it's, those skills aren't that complicated. You learn support, resistance, trend line, um, maybe a little price action, and you can go make you some money. And you probably don't need that many skills. So in, in the, over here, I feel the same way. You learn how to make a list, right? Or, require, or or bring new people into your organization, right? So you learn how to find prospects. You learn how to invite those prospects. You learn how to present. And in our case, use a push plate. Use these. Use your upline. Use your leaders. Use the, the 3 p.m., the 8 p.m. calls that coaches do, coach do, right? Um, you learn how to, how to present. And you, and you may not even have to learn how to close. So if you can just learn those three skills, you can become great. So for me, I, I personally believe it doesn't take a lot to actually learn the skills. What people miss is the consistency behind the skills. The basics is the most, the, the dopest part. So anyway, long story short, um, I help people with the basics by not telling them, by not getting them on a prezo and saying, or a slide and saying, watch this. I do it with them. Let's make a call. Call them right now. Right. And so um, that's really my fast start. Process. I love it, man. I, I love it, man. You just straight ignorance on fire. And, uh, you know, one thing that's great about these calls, guys, is every, everyone who's called is a leader at some, you know, some point. Some of us are leaders in the making. But as long as you're leading your ship the way you want and you're getting results, then run with it. Right. You know, it's not because one thing is the Bible and this has to be done this way. Just like you said, sometimes you can just get people excited. You just work off that excitement. And, you know, that's why it's a testament that you have is broke a new P5000, Mr. T, uh, Mr. Tawn Henderson on the call. As a matter of fact, guys, do me a favor, go down in the chat, drop a seven for uh, Mr. Tawn Henderson for breaking P5000 two days ago. Mad love and respect that he and his lovely wife got a chance to meet them uh, in Detroit. And uh, we've been just connected at the hip, uh, talk and help them. And, you know, just one of the nicest guys you want to meet. But Mr. Henderson, you know, you as one of uh, Jazz's uh, number one disciples, so to speak, you know, you were uh, a very busy family man, had your own company. Um, you know, you came over here and just listened and followed, you know, Mr. Williams' uh, game plan. And, and now you're P5000 on your way to Chairman 10, man. Uh, what is what is Mr. Williams' leadership done for you, my friend? Man, it's, it, the crazy thing. First of all, thank you for having me on there, man. I, I remember meeting you in, uh, in uh, Detroit, sitting next to you like, hey, man, how you doing? What's your name? And I was like, oh, that's him. But uh, we'll save that for another day. But yeah, Jazz, man, I, I've known Jazz from a previous company and I've seen him literally become rookie of the year and was just killing it over there. So when we could work together, you know, it was just, man, I was just a student. And um, I was like, you know, I look at him as my little brother. Like I got three younger brothers, one of his age. And I'm like, dude, you are way beyond, you know, your age right now, bro. So I just listened to the brother. And one thing, I just asked a lot of questions. And when he's talking, I'm, I'm just writing. So when he talked about, you know, literally building through people, I'm like, all right, man, say it again. How do you do it? And as he's telling me, I'm actually writing it down. I was like, I got it. And I come from a sales background. So my wife and I, we, we actually put up a little script and was like, yo, Jazz, this is what we're doing. He was like, yo. So we just kind of copy what he does. I mean, he hit chairman in 90 days. So if he can do it, I can do it. 
Uh, but one thing I can say about him, one thing about his leadership, man, he's really good at just tapping people and, and touching them at the right moment. You see, when I came over here, I was, you know, in another company and I was just chilling. I was comfortable. And I literally hit P600 by not accident, but he was like, hey, man, you got a couple more people to put in the system to hit P600. And I was like, no, I didn't do that part. I just became a customer, man. I ain't, I ain't doing the recruiting thing over here. Right. And he just said, no, nah, bro, you got to sign up like one to two more people and they're going to pay you $600. And I did it. And then um, a couple months later, I'm like, hey, bro, where's that money at? Like you said, I was going to get 600 They ain't send a check. And he was just like, man, you got to log in. And I'm like, all right, 90 days later, I'm like, cool, this thing really works. How do I go to the next rate? And he just work, works with me, man. He's always on time. And I can just, man, any young person that, that is on this call, any old person that's on the call, any person that's on the call, I just learn from this guy every single day. And his leadership is just growing, growing and growing because he's reading all these books. And I'm just honored to be up under his, his leg, his umbrella, man. And that's my brother right there. So I appreciate you, bro. I, I, I love it, man. And also, guys, I want everybody on this call to look right over Tom's shoulder. What do you see on the wall? What do you see on the wall? I am a chairman. See guys, you gotta have that stuff in front of you. You gotta have your, whatever it is that you seek is seeking you. If you don't have those clues in front of you every single day, as far as what it is you want to accomplish, I guarantee you every one of the leaders, chairmen on this call, if you go through their home, there's things to say, I'm chairman. I'm going chairman 100. I, I'm gonna do this. I'm, they have their goals written out clear and concise always in front of them man so that let's talk i can't wait bro to watch you and welcome you to the chairman uh ranks man congratulations to your wife as well too man i know you guys really rock this thing you know together and uh man again again man super proud of you i, I hate i fell asleep the other day man i wanted to get on that call to surprise you man but you know another love for you bro appreciate you man my man my man so jazz man you you knock this thing out the park you know one of one of our partners you know, Chairman 25, Mr. Randy Webb, he was down in Dallas, Texas this past weekend. And, you know, I saw him and his team out there just representing like he always does, a super professional. But Randy, man, what was it, what was that Dallas event like? Would you come out of that event with the most of this weekend? And just so you guys know, guys, Randy Webb is Chairman 25. He came over to this company after building a team over 30,000 subscribers in his last endeavor. And, uh, you know, uh, pilot, you know, served in the military super leader, nice guy you ever want to meet. And, uh, you know, he came over to our company and ran past everybody like they was walking backwards too. So this guy, you guys, this is uh, Mr. Chairman 25, Mr. Randy Webb. Thank you, coach. I appreciate it. First of all, I just want to give hugs back to, to you and Tamara. I, we appreciate you guys really taking the helm and being that first yes in the company, or, or at least the first or second yes in the company, because without you guys here, we, we none of us will be here. The, the event this weekend, oh my goodness, was just absolute fire. Like any event, I'll just tell you guys this, if you haven't plugged into a physical event yet, one thing that we always know is building from event to event. And it's not about the how-tos. It's not about, hey, I'm going to go to this event. I'm going to learn everything there is to know about building. What you're going to see is going to raise your belief level. It's going to raise your faith because you're going to see people who sound like you, look like you, who are doing phenomenal things, especially inside I am. You know, we got from, from, from Chairman 10, 25, 50, all the way up to Chairman 750. And you hear these phenomenal stories. And you're like, me too. Hey, from the Jason Browns five years, pizza guy, now making, you know, almost a million dollars a month to you got, you know, this, this, this weekend we heard some, you know, Chris Terry came on, on stage and he said, uh, listen, uh, he ain't playing around, by the way. He is trying to get people paid. I, I want to say I heard something called Chairman 10 million said from the stage. So, <laughs> okay. Yeah. That dropped mic right there. I said, and he was serious. Um, when I say that I am, is that company, Okay, there are going to be a lot of people that are hurt whoever left the company because what I believe I and Chris are putting into this company right now, and I feel privileged to be right here right now. What I took from that event is just more belief, more belief about where we're going, you know, what our CEOs and, and, and CFOs are willing to put into this company. Um, you know, the people who are elevating, there are a lot of chairmen that, that, that popped this weekend as well, too. Um, and I believe that, you know, if any of those folks can do it, then I'll, I believe that you can do it. I believe that I can do it because there's no one that has anything other than what we all have on this call here. So what I took from this, this event was major belief, you know, direction where the company is going, more confirmation of where this company is going. And I'm just excited to be in this. Excellent, man. I saw the energy, man. I was tuning in, watching the stories and watching all the people, man, jump up and down and things like that, man. And just really, really excited. And, you know, guys, 
you, some of you guys, this is your very first company. Let me tell you guys, you guys have hit the Shangri-La of networking. Like literally, there's not a company I've seen in my 20 years of doing networking, guys, that could come a, a close second to the documentation. I mean, this is real talk. A lot of companies are a lot of hype. A lot of companies say guys making this type of money and not. But guys, we got almost 500 chairman leaders in IM Mastery Academy. That's 500 people making 10,000 a month or more. And some of you guys on this call tap dance and playing around, got one toe in this thing, not going, going all in, act as if it can't happen for you. Listen, if some of these guys, let's be real, guys. I'm going to keep it 100 with you guys. There's some people in this company making 100,000 a month in business who shouldn't even be in business. I'm, I'm telling you, not the sharpest tools in the shed but they just going out there putting in the work. I mean, just putting in the work. And one thing you cannot deny is work ethic. Remember, I, I put a post online the other day, two things you need in business is passion and action. Passion and action. You got to have passion to go chairman and you got to put in the action to make it come to fruition. Other than that, guys, everything else we do that is not you know, focus on going chairman. Like right now, this is the time. This is the time to get your piece of the of, of the rock right now because our company is an incredible company right now. It's not gonna be the same opportunity five years from now, guys. But you guys want to be on the you guys want to be on that chairman hall of fame. Like if we ever had a corporate office, your picture is on the wall because you saw something and you were a pioneer. You were one of the people who took all the arrows in your back and made it happen. And now your team envision your team going and seeing you, your picture on the wall, like that's my leader. I remember when he came to the company three years ago. You know, and look, look where you are today. You got to write that story, guys. Because listen, if you go to work every single day, and you guys hear me say this in every presentation, guys. If you go to work every single day and you can't entertain the freaking thought of making 10000 a month after all the hours you work, jumping into a sea of taillights and traffic to go to the job, you know, time you got to, you know, get in traffic and, you know, dealing with, you know, politicking and player hate and all that kind of stuff at the job. And while you're there, you can't even entertain the thought of making 10000 a month. 25,000 a month. If you can't even think those thoughts, it's right here in front of you. And this is not hard. Just like Jazz says, this is not hard. It's just new. So if you want to learn this, just like, you know, it's crazy. You turn on the internet and I look at all these nonsensical dances all these kids are doing. And they learn these dances every five minutes. It's something new. People can focus on learning a, a freaking stupid dance but not willing to take the time to focus on getting money out the way. You guys, you guys see that? See people, you gotta, you gotta focus on what you want. And now is the time that you don't wanna play around because you will look up. And I'm sure all the leaders on this call realize this. You will look up and a year didn't pass by. You're like, dang, what did I do this year? I, I, I didn't, I only talked to 12 people. I'm not putting, putting anybody on presentations. I'm not doing any three day phone calls. I'm not attending any events. Like, what am I doing? Am I trying to be an impact player and I am Master Academy or I'm just going to be a person that nobody knows my name? Listen, man, you want people to say your name. I want to be able to say that Demita McGee, oh, she's about that life. That Dr. Nikki Miller, she's about that life. That Mr. Gene Christopher, he's about that life. You know what I'm saying? You want, to, you want people to know that I am Master Academy is your livelihood and this is what's going to take you and your family to new stratospheres in business, man. So, guys, do me a favor. Drop a seven in the chat if you got any value from the locker room call today. Drop a seven in the chat, guys, if you had any value from the locker room call today. We're always going to try to give you guys some really good value and content to help you go to the other side of money, guys. So, listen, we do this call every Tuesday, 5 p.m. Eastern time. Get your teams on these calls. It's not the LY show. You can see we got the whole gamut of leaders going to give you guys nothing but gold nuggets to help you guys go to the top. And this is, this is like $100,000 worth of information you guys get for free. Because guess what? All of us have invested in going to uh, motivational speakers, things like that, to help pour this knowledge. We've given it to you for free. To me, if you're not willing to take the time to tap in, then I don't know. I, hey, sorry for your loss, right? But with that being said, guys, tonight, 8 o'clock Eastern time, Curtis Cobain Branch will be doing an overview tonight. You guys know Blockchain Cobain is going to be in the building. He's going to blaze it out 8 p.m. tonight on the same very channel. Real good opportunity call that they do on Tuesday nights on this call here. So let's make sure we support them. And since I got my main man, uh, Jazz, on the line, let me go on to end this call with some real big sauce for you. This is right here. This is right here. 
jazz for you, man, because you want to go out and get that what? That cream. Let's go get it, guys. <laughs> Let's go get it, fam. Jazz might be too young for this one. But let's go get it, guys. I love y'all. Let's go get it. Let's finish out the month strong, okay? Let's go get it. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.